Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. I want to do a tutorial on how to create a login screen and it's going to be over a series of videos. So the first one, we are going to create some custom buttons using Xcode, the interface builder, and then some images that I've created in Photoshop. So let's get started. Let's create a new Xcode project and then I'll show you what we'll be building. First thing I'm going to do is create a new Xcode project with the Dialog here, we'll go iOS application single view. It's always a great place to start. Then I'll go next and we will call this our login screen. I'm making it just for iPhone and then I'll hit next here. From here, I will create this in my projects folder and then hit create. And now we're just gonna walk through how to get started with the user interface. So we're gonna start in our interface file. And let me show you what we're going to demo. So here is what we'll start to build. And we're gonna focus on these buttons down here. So this is just creating a custom screen with a custom background, some kind of header image, login prompts, and then some buttons along the bottom that the user can interact with. And we're gonna customize these with two images that I've created here. So if I switch between them, if you're looking right here, you should see that they change shades. And so that's to do the hover state or the select state when the user is tapping on it. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab both of these images that I have here and I will just drag them into the project. I'll copy them into the destinations folder and then I can hit the finish button here and we should see those appear. And let's get started with the buttons. So I have two images here and I really want to, to work with a new feature in Xcode, which is the assets images. And this will allow me to set up some stretch or, or tile markings on my images because I want them to resize based on certain attributes. So we can hit this plus down here when we select the image assets. And this will allow us to import from the project, which will actually pull these files in here. And if I hit import, we will see an option here. I would suggest probably to enable since it's a new project that will pop up and that's going to help you recover things if something goes wrong. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I tend to use an, a different version control system than the one that Xcode comes with because I don't really trust Xcode by itself. So I'll use Git or something like that. Now, aside from that, we have these two different images and I can look at each one and we can set up some slicing marks like you would do in Photoshop or any kind of image editor. You can do the same thing in code, but this is a new feature that allows you to do it in the interface builder. So I'm gonna hit show slicing and we can start slicing on this image and then I'm gonna select this one because I want the images to resize both vertically and horizontally. Now you might want your image to only stretch horizontally. And if that's the case, you can create your asset so that it will stretch in that direction better than stretching in both directions. So that's probably the ideal case, but in, in this example, I'm just gonna use this image to show you how you can stretch in both directions. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna click on this area. And if you've got the detail panel open, you will see that we now have some options here for how it's going to stretch. And we actually wanna scroll down to the bottom here. Now my image is a 80, I believe by 80 pixel image. And so if I want to stretch based on the very center mark or pixel, I'm going to have to go all the way into the center. So that's around 40 pixels in on the left and the right. And you'll notice that there is one pixel that will be tiled or stretched. And so that's why this re or this, that's why this changed to, to 39 because it's that pixel that's right under the tip of my cursor here. And if I can zoom in, we can see right above my cursor, you can see that one pixel. So that pixel color in, in this example is gonna stretch in both the vertical and the horizontal directions when I stretch out this button. All right, so let's zoom back out. And right now it's set to tiling. I, I could also set it to stretching. So these are options. It depends on how you design your graphics. So it might be better to, to tile or to stretch a certain art asset. Okay, so that set up the, the normal button. Now we have to do the same thing with our highlight. 
and I'll just click on it and then we will click here to get the options for all of our slicing. If I scroll down now, again, we're on this tab here. It's a third tab in um, the right and I'll just type in 40, 40, 40, and 40 and it'll auto correct and, and make it so that it fits correctly. So that'll be the same setup as the first button. And now if we leave this, it should save those changes and we can drag out our first buttons. And I'm actually, I'm gonna delete this second button. We're gonna work with one button and then we're gonna copy it so that we have the attribute set. So we're gonna make this a custom button. And, and there's a couple things I wanna show you, I guess that can change. So let's do the login button. And here, right now it's set up as a system button and I'll show you how that behaves on the simulator because there's certain things you get for free with the system button that sort of make your app feel iOS 7-ish. But if that's not the look you're going for, you can really just customize. So you'll notice that when I tap on this button, it's, it's desaturating and it's fading out when I click on it. And so we can get that same behavior with a single image in the default state. So a button has multiple states. It can be up where you're not touching it, which is the default state. It can be highlighted, which is when you're pressing on it with your finger. It can be selected like it's a, a check button. So it could be an on off sort of switch or it can be disabled. And so you can disable a button programmatically. Now, in this case, we're only gonna start with the default for this button. And with that state, I wanna set one of the images that we have here. So we had the button stretch image. Now you'll notice that if I set it here, when I am looking at it, it's, it's setting this little icon image. And so that's the wrong place to put it. So you don't want it on the image. I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna put it on the background. So here we can just do the drop down and select it or we can type it in. Now you'll notice that the corners are stretching. Interface builder in this cur current version of Xcode, which is 5.1 does not apply the slicing that we set up for whatever reason. And I'm not sure if this is a bug or if I need to tell it to do something, but it's not showing the correct slicing. And I'm pretty sure in the WWDC videos, it did do that. So uh, I, I could be wrong there, but when we actually run this, we should, we should see something a little bit different. And so there are the nice corners because we set up the slicing. So if you want, you can go into your image assets and adjust the slicing if it doesn't look good for your, for your current button that you have. So we can duplicate this and I'll show you what happens when we stretch it this way. And now we can see that it's stretched. It, it really doesn't look as good as this one up here. So if you're going to design a button to stretch both horizontally and vertically, it's going to look a little bit different on the inside because it's going to be repeating that middle pixel here. And so it's going to give us that different look. So now if we are tapping on this, Right now we are looking at the custom button. So by default, and I, I guess I'll drag out one more button so we can see how this is gonna look differently. So let's just copy this one. All I do is hold the option key and I can click on a button to duplicate it. Now I'm gonna change the first button back to a system button. And you'll see that the font changes here versus our custom button. And then this last button, I'm gonna set up correctly with our, our background image. So if I, change our state to the highlight. This is when the user has their finger on our button. We want to have a different image. And currently what it will do is it, it shows a highlight and it darkens with the custom option set. And if we just add our highlight image here, which is the button stretch highlighted, we should see a difference when we tap on each one of these buttons. So let's go ahead and run this. And I will click on the first button. So here we see that default behavior when I first clicked on the very first button before we customize it. It will desaturate both the image and the title and we get that sort of iOS 7 style uh, of button interaction aside from the fact that it's got the real button bounds. So I've used this in one of my apps just because I liked the way it worked in the app and I didn't want to use the, the highlight image. The other approach is to not set a highlight image and this is the behavior that you'll get so when you tap on it, it gets darker. 
And then the last one is when you customize the highlight, you can get whatever image that you add there. So these are the images that I have set up. If we look at my image assets, you can see them here. And I'm going to just bring that back up so you can compare roughly by what the colors look like. So you can see this is our, our normal. And let me just click off of that and bring up the simulator. And you can see how the the tone matches whatever our highlight is. So that's the different ways to create your buttons. And I would highly recommend making your button height the same height as the the graphic. So make your art asset match in height to your graphic. And so if we look at this, I don't know if it will show me the actual size. It's okay, right here. So it says 80 by 80 pixels. So if I was to use this in an iPhone app, when we're working with a retina screen, you divide 80 by two. And so I would only make the button 20 pixels, sorry, 40 pixels tall. If I wanted a bigger button, I would make our graphic bigger so that I get a better gradient when we do the horizontal stretch. So if we look at our interface here, we can look at the sizing of these buttons and it looks like our height is 40. So it is matching the, the standard height for a button and my, my art asset's gonna look good and that's why it looked a little bit funny when we stretched it out and reran it. All right, so that is working with custom buttons in Xcode. In the next video, I will work on laying out the rest of the screen and adding a background image so that you can sort of control the whole presentation of your application.